Hi there, this is Taylor checking in with some conservation news from the past couple weeks for Pelicanus and intentional ecology. Working in the environmental field is an experience of some very high highs and some low lows. As always, there are horrendous environmental stories that deserve our attention, action, and mobilization, but it is our opinion that you can find those headlines in many places. But there are also empowering and inspiring stories that demonstrate major conservation successes from around the globe, achieved by real people who have grouped together to create a better planet. We've been collecting these stories and messages every week for years, and I'm still surprised at how resilient and creative both nature and humans are when facing big challenges. We've got about four big headlines for today's Pelicanus News. I've categorized them into drawdown and wildlife. I really do love these stories, and uh, they're reminders to me that conservation success comes in all forms. All right, this first category is drawdown, and the first headline here is U.S. rejects controversial Alaska pebble gold and copper mine. This is coming out of Bloomberg.com, and we actually talked about this back, I think, in um, September or August, Um, and this is the um, latest about it. The Pebble Mine in Alaska was dealt a potentially lethal blow after the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers rejected an essential permit for the project. The proposed mine in southwestern Alaska, which would tap one of the world's largest undeveloped copper and gold deposits, has been dogged by protests for years. As conservationists warned against uh, industrial mining operations near Bristol Bay that threaten a flourishing sockeye salmon fishery. The Army Corps issued a record of decision denying Pebbles' permit. After determining the project is contrary to the public interest, said Colonel Damon De La Rosa, the agency's Alaska district commander. In August, okay, so it was August, uh, the Army Corps concluded the mining plan from Northern Dynasty Minerals Limited would likely result in significant degradation of the environment and the agency demanded a mitigation plan to offset the project's effects on nearby wetlands. Northern Dynasty's subsidiary, Pebble Limited Partnership, submitted the mitigation plan earlier this month, though the details weren't released to the public. Northern Dynasty called the decision politically motivated and said it was not supported by the Corps' recently released environmental impact statement. The company said it intends to launch an appeal within 60 days. Developers also could challenge the rejection in federal court. Um, But so far, it is looking like that mine is not going to happen, and that makes me very happy. Second headline here, uh, coming from APNews.com. General Motors flips to California's side in pollution fight against the White House. General Motors is switching sides in the legal fight against California's right to set its own clean air standards, abandoning the current White House administration's position. GM CEO Mary Barra, Barra? I don't know, said in a letter to environmental groups that GM will no longer support the White House in its defense against a lawsuit over its efforts against California's standards and GM is urging other automakers to do the same. The move is a sign that GM and other automakers are anticipating big changes when President-elect Joe Biden takes office in January. Already, at least one other large automaker, Toyota, said it may join GM in switching to California's team. In her letter, Barra wrote that the company agrees with Biden's plan to expand electric vehicle use. GM also said it is testing a new battery chemistry that will bring down electric vehicle costs to those of gas-powered vehicles within five years. Oh man, I love to see that. All right, second category, wildlife. I love both of these. They're both great. Uh, The first one is out of sciencetimes.com. The Galapagos sees record rise in penguins, flightless cormorants. Penguins and flightless cormorants, two species endemic to the Galapagos Islands, have seen a record rise in their populations according to a new study. 
A report from the Charles Darwin Foundation summarizes the study conducted last month. A census conducted on the two bird species saw Galapagos penguins increase from 1,451 in 2019 to 1,940 in 2020. On the other hand, flightless cormorant numbers rose from 1,914 to 2,220. The number of cormorants has reached a record number, huh. according to historical data dating back to 1977, while the number of penguins is at its highest since, 20, uh, since 2006. The Galapagos National Park said in a statement, the GNP collaborated with the Darwin Foundation to conduct the study and the census on the penguins and cormorants. Researchers attributed the growth of their population to the pre presence of La Nina, a meteorological phenomenon that causes equatorial waters to drop in temperature that uh, increased food supply for the birds. Another factor cited in the report was the coronavirus pandemic, which restricted tourism in the area and minimized risks of disturbing the local nesting areas. Um, I also think that they're discounting the fact that since 1977, there have been uh, conservationists in the area trying to work on these populations. Um, I think that's one of the things that we often take for granted is that there's a lot of people working really hard to, to do this. So yeah, that's just my little editorial there. The last headline out of BBC.com, and I really, this is fun. The uh, global map of bees created in a conservation first. Scientists have mapped the distribution of all 20,000 bee species on Earth. The new global map of bees will help in the conservation of the insects we rely on to pollinate our crops, say researchers in Singapore and China. Bee populations are facing pressure from habitat loss and the use of pesticides, yet little is known about the array of species living on every continent save Antarctica, ranging from tiny stingless bees to bees the size of a human thumb. Bees provide essential services to our ecosystem and are the major pollinators of many of our staple foods, said Dr. Alice Hughes of the Chinese Academy of Sciences in Yunnan. Yet, until now, we have not had the data to show where the where on the planet most species are. Here, we combine millions of records to create the first maps of global bee richness and understand why we see these patterns, she told the BBC News. Um, and the BBC also has a little uh, thing, it's uh, facts about bees. Um, I really love this too. There are over 16,000 known bee species in seven recognized families. Some species, such as honeybees, bumblebees, and stingless bees, live in colonies, while others are solitary insects. Although some groups, such as bumblebees, are well studied, the vast majority, more than 96% of bee species, are poorly documented. Many crops, especially in developing countries, rely on native bee species, not honeybees, for their pollination. All right, I hope these stories bring some optimism and lightness to your month, and, um... Well, I look forward to sharing more in the future.